What up, friends? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Score Report. Here in week six, we are talking start and sits for your fantasy lineup. Our good friend Liz Loza is going to stop by for a little bit of fun. And we're doing a squirrel stock towards the end of the episode, so make sure you stick around. Let's get to it. Who's that All right, we're headed into week six, and we've got two teams on a bye, the Packers and the Steelers. So this week, that means you've got to fill in for, hold on, let me check my notes. Basically nobody within your fantasy lineup. How fun is that? So maybe if you're streaming a few guys, you want to focus on some people you could consider for your week six lineup. That's what we're talking about. Like Logan Thomas. Guys, the Atlanta Falcons have given up the second most fantasy points to tight ends. And on a per game basis, Logan Thomas is top 10 in routes, receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. That's all the way that you score points. Tight end has been awful this year. And after last week's 20 point outing, he is averaging 11.7 fantasy points per game. You can start BLT here in week six. Does anyone call him that? Big Logan Thomas? No? Was that week five stat line for James Cook real? Five carries for negative four yards? That is awful, guys. I've been told girl math can solve almost anything, but even I'm having a hard time figuring this one out. Let's bring in our girl math expert, Sarah. Sarah, does this girl math check out for you? Nope. Great, great. Now I'm even more confused. Girl math doesn't work, boy math doesn't work. I don't know what to do here, but even with last week's dud, don't even think about benching James Cook, especially with how thin the running back position has been. Not only is James getting the volume in this offense, he is out touching Latavius Murray and Damian Harris three to one. He is taking on a giant scene who have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to running backs. Guys, this matchup is too good. You've got to start James Dalvin Cook against the Giants here in week six. I still believe in Jerome Ford, and I think he's going to be a very useful running back for us on our way to a fantasy championship. I believe in you, by the way. And I believe in Jerome Ford, but not so much in week six against the San Francisco 49ers. Not only is this defense pretty good, but nobody's been able to slow down this 49ers offense. And I don't think that Cleveland will slow them down either, which means we're talking about a potential negative game script. And Deshaun Watson's health is in question here. Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski said he'll be out there as soon as he's functionally ready. Deshaun hasn't looked functionally ready all season long, so this is not ideal and it does not inspire confidence for me and neither should Jerome Ford unless that $250 million man is under center. I've got Jerome Ford outside of my top 20 and hopefully you don't have to start him here in week six. DeAndre Hopkins looked fantastic in week five. That's the exception. Definitely not the rule when it comes to Hopkins season. I mean, he has had surprisingly good volume coming from this Titans pass offense. He's wide receiver 14 in targets through five weeks. That is incredible. But he's wide receiver 34 in fantasy points. He's all volume and no production. And this week, he will draw a stout Ravens defense that is allowing 14 points per game, second fewest in the NFL. I'm trying to find another option if I can. At most, DeAndre Hopkins is a flex play here in week six, but ideally, he should be on your bench. All right, Liz here. Why don't you take Marshall, the emotional support bear. Do you need any Kleenexes too? No, not my clay. Oh, that's good because he was in here just before you and we are now fresh out, so. All right, what's bothering you today? Well, um, what's really bothering me is father time. I mean, I know, I know he comes for us all, Doc, but now he's coming for someone who I really thought could be in my lineup, Dalvin Cook. I understand that, but very few have escaped father time's grasp like Frank Gore and Dalvin Cook is not the exception. He is the rule, unfortunately. He's averaging 2.7 yards per carry. He has zero touchdowns on the season, Liz. I want to work through this with a breathing exercise, all right? I want you to breathe in with me. And then we're going to push all the Dalvin Cook out of our fantasy lineups. All right, one more time. Breathe it in. Okay. Push all the Dalvin Cook out of our fantasy lineups. Oh, that feels so much better. All right, all right, I feel good. What's next? Um, well, <laughs> well um, Doc. Yeah? You know, I've like struggled with trust issues. Oh, for sure. I'm a Bears fan, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm really nervous about taking this next leap with David Montgomery, but I like really want to. Oh, Liz, 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 this is not the Chicago Bears. You know, this is the Detroit Lions, an actual NFL franchise that is four and one right now. I'll tell you what. 
Why don't you give Marshall a little bit of a squeeze? See, mm, don't you feel better already by doing that? Man, David Montgomery was drafted as running back 32. Through the last four weeks, this guy's RB2 on the season. I mean, you can absolutely put him in your fantasy lineup. Will his workload continue? You know, I thought that the Lions split work last season, mm. and I'm not sure if I can handle a timeshare. I don't really enjoy sharing, mm. right? Like last time I invested in those, I wound up spending a week in an elderly community in Florida that was riddled with hard candies and venereal diseases, and it was not good for my blood pressure or my mentals. We should rewind that back and unpack it next week, but I'm gonna keep moving on here because there is a lot to talk about within those Florida old folks communities. Here's the thing about the Detroit Lions. Even if Jameer Kibbs comes back and starts doing things towards the second half of the season, Liz, David Montgomery is still gonna be the lead back in this backfield. He is going to get into end zones, so you're gonna wanna have him in your fantasy lineup. It's okay to trust David Montgomery. He's gonna be a top 15 guy the rest of the way, Liz. All right, thank you. Yeah, I think I think I heard Marshall say he agrees. Liz, Marshall is just a, a stuffed animal that's not actually talking to you. We don't need to go back to the psych wars, do we? This was... No, it was a joke. But... Oh, oh, yeah, 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 okay, okay. But okay. am I a joke for thinking that Jordan Addison could be a fantasy savior this season? Jordan Addison is a rocket ship right now. Are you kidding me? With Justin Jefferson out of the way, there is a clear path for Jordan Addison to take off to the moon right now. And this is this is not one of those rocket ships. It's very phallic-like and put out by a, a really weird, creepy billionaire owner who's got a Napoleon complex. No, this is a legitimate opportunity for Jordan Addison to take your fantasy team to the next level. This guy is ready to go to infinity and beyond. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of nerdy, but I guess you have a PhD. Um, but once I remove it, that, I, th I think the, um, that might help me. Why, why am I the nerd? Yeah, I'm a full-on grown-up, the one sitting here holding a teddy bear in the middle of the day. Your time's up! Get out of here, Liz! Gosh, I got Nagandi coming in here in five. He's been having the yips again. All right, guys, week six squirrel stock is here. We're looking for a couple of guys whose value's going up and whose value is going down. The market is open! Whee! All right, listen, this is Brees Hall's team. Did you see what he looked like when he's not on a pitch count? Which is also like the weirdest saying. Why are we using these baseball analogies? There is one good baseball analogy, and it's this one. Guys, this is Brees Hall. He's a running back. He's one of the most undervalued players in fantasy football. His defect is that he was hurt, and his quarterback sucks. Nobody in fantasy cared about him because of those injuries, and Zach Wilson. Well, this guy can not only be the best running back in fantasy, he could be one of the most effective running backs in all of football. He should have been a second round pick, but we, we got him in the sixth round. Oh, what a great quote by Jonah Hill. Anyways, in week five, Brees Hall turned that into 25 touches for 194 yards and a touchdown, and he did so with a huge 72 yard touchdown run, showing off that 4-3 speed, baby. Now listen guys, I know sometimes tweets can be a little bit misleading about the markets, but Brees Hall's stock is way up right now. We are currently looking at a legit blue chip prospect. Brees Hall to the moon! Whee! One of the top comments on last week's video was, why are you screaming at me so much? Well, I'd stop screaming if we didn't have to talk about guys like Miles Sanders. This was a guy we thought was gonna have some nice RB2 value for us this year. And five weeks in, we are getting the volume. Dude's got 76 touches. That is top 16 at the position. But his production has been bad. He is averaging 8.8 .8 fantasy points per game. That's single digits! Even guys like Khalil Herbert and backup running back Jalen Warren are scoring more fantasy points than Miles Sanders. There is so much potential for negative game script week in and week out with this Panthers team. Squirrel stock is down for the foreseeable future for Miles Sanders. All right, guys, it's finally time to talk about Gabe Davis. He's got a receiving touchdown in four straight games, and he didn't just get into the end zone last week. He stuffed the stat sheet. Kind of like my Aunt Kim, who stuffs our turducken during Thanksgiving. Shout out to aunties everywhere doing the Lord's work over the holidays. But let's talk about Gabe Davis right now. He's running routes in bunches. He is always on the field, but can you trust a guy that has scored four touchdowns in four straight games, or should you be a little bit more skeptical? For the short term? Who cares? 
the Bills get the Giants on Sunday Night Football this week. This matchup is a prime spot for Gabe Davis to smash yet again. I like Gabe Davis, and I want to continue to see what he can be in this Bills offense. So for right now, here in week six against the Giants, Squirrel Stock is up for Gabe Davis. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us again this week. Shout out to Liz Loza for stopping by and to my Aunt Kim for always keeping us fed over here. If you enjoyed this show, please share it with at least one friend and please keep your voicemails coming. We wanna answer as many as we possibly can on the show. We love you guys, truly. Thank you for being you. Don't forget to love each other. Be kind to yourself. Good luck here in week six. We'll see you in week seven.